Hey guys, today we are going to talk about Death Shadow. It is a tier 1 deck and modern. Many will consider it, including myself, the strongest deck in modern in terms of it has very good matchups and it has very few bad matchups. So what is Death Shadow and why could it be banned? One of the principles of Magic Gathering is if a deck is too strong, they will ban something from the deck. This has been shown for, for everything like Aldrazi, to Splinter Twin, to recently even Dreads got hit. Which, I don't know, many people would consider Dreads a dominant tier 1 deck like Death Shadow. So Death Shadow is very similar in terms of dominance to those decks and those decks all got hit and also amulet bloom birthing pod the list can go on and on and on so modern is a format where they pretty much ban whatever they feel like so before you go out and buy this deck keep that in mind that yes this is a tier one deck but at any time, they can make sure that it is not. What is Death Shadow and what is the most optimal build? Grixis Death Shadow is considered the strongest. It has access to black, red, and blue, which makes it extremely dangerous when you have Snapcaster Maids, you have Fatal Puss, and Overall, it is one of the strongest decks I've ever seen played in Modern. I've been playing Modern since Inception, and I haven't seen a deck like this because all the negative things that you normally would... They, it plays some of the strongest cards, but like if you take Street Wraith and you take um, Thought Seize, the reasons those cards are so good to offset the cards being so good, you have life loss. But in this deck, your life loss is actually a benefit. And that's what makes this deck so difficult to beat because it's not trying to keep a high life total. In fact, if you hit them harder, that's even better for this deck. So when you have cards like Street Wraith, the only downside of that card is the life loss. And when you have cards like fetch lands and you're fetching for a shock land and you use thought seas, these are cards traditionally with downsides which involve life loss. But when that life loss is an upside, they become even stronger in this deck. So some of the cards that I want to talk about include Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Very, very good against boggles, against revelation control, it's a high, it's a very powerful card that will strain your opponent's resources. Now, the Beller Lily is actually Liliana the Last Hope, which is in Standard. And it is the most expensive card in Standard. It's very good in Standard, but it may be even better in this deck. So in a typical deck, a typical Jun deck, or a typical deck that would play Lily of the Veil, Liliana the Last Hope is additional lilies, right? It's a 4-2, but 4 for of the Veil and 2 the Last Hope. In this deck, it's actually the opposite. It is very, very good because your matchups against Coco and Lingering Souls, it removes all of those pesky blockers. Remember, your, your big dude, Death Shadow, does not have Trample unless you give it Trample. It's just a very big body. And Liliana, the Last Hope, Plussing and removing a blocker is very ideal. And the fact that she does interact with your graveyard is also very good. Her ultimate, you're not really going to use that much. So as a speculation in standard, I know she is extremely expensive right now. But I would not be unhappy to own Eldritch Moon Fat Packs. Eldritch Moon Fat Packs are unique because it does have Lily. It also has Emiko, which would suck if you pull that one. But more, as in terms of casual appeal, those boxes, you know, those booster, those fat pack booster boxes, or fat pack uh, boxes, they are really in high demand, especially in Eldritch Moon. 
I've never seen so many people want them or hold on to them. I've never seen such a big price for a standard fat pack box. As a side note, Lily, very good card. Eldrick Moon fat packs are always on discount. I think David Adams has it for 25. They have Shadows over Innistrad for 25. I don't know what they have Eldrick Moon for, but very good card. So when you talk about this deck, it's all about graveyard. It's all about card selection. It's about putting stuff, losing life, and being okay to take a hit as long as you have Death Shadow in hand. Death Shadow is actually a tremendous tempo card because it only costs one black. So it's not like you're tapping out to play this huge creature. You're only tapping one black, and it comes down as a 7-7 seven, seven, or a 6-6. Six, six. It comes down as a 5-5 five, five or bigger most times. And many times it's bigger than Tamagoyf in this deck. I am intrigued and kind of will look at the financial history of Death Shadow because it was bulk for very long, for a very long time. And this deck that you're seeing right now is actually not the stronger version of the deck because they banned Gitaxin Probe. The deck was slightly better with Gitaxin Probe. Now with Gitaxin Probe banned, this is a weaker version of it but still it's a tier one dominant deck in modern it is the dominant deck in modern and i don't know why no one figured it out until much later maybe it was splinter twin i know a lot of people are saying twin is the reason that this deck was kept down or aldrazi winter happened and that obviously was very very good something kept this deck down because all the pieces already existed. We're not talking about new cards that were recently printed, although Fatal Push is a new card. It didn't need a Fatal Push. It actually would rather have the Gitaxian Probes in that slot. So when you talk about the Kulgans Command, Lightning Bolts have been around forever, Inquisition, Thoughtseize, Visions, Scour. These are cards that have been around since pretty much Modern's existence, and this deck could have been dominant even then. Something changed in the meta that allowed something like this to be even stronger than Tamagoyf. I don't know if the meta will shift back now that this is a known quantity, but it is one of those things that if you are the first adopter of a deck and, and Death Shadow is literally bulk, a quarter of Death Shadow, and you jump on this deck and you feel like it's real and it turns out it is the tier 1 deck that everyone wants. It gets a little bit help, right? If Adrazi Winter or Adrazi Ive Ugin was not banned, I don't know how this deck would do against Adrazi. Adrazi was very OP. It, I mean, your Death Shadow would just be another big creature, but the Adrazi are running lots of big creature and they are actually very fast. So they can actually hit you 20 damage even faster than you would like to lose the life and you're a deck that really wants to lose life i don't believe the meta can shift back without an without another banning i don't believe they will unban cards that's typically not what happens right they don't unban cards to deter to make new cards the cards that are new decks the cards that they unban are cards they know will have little effect such as they unban bitter blossom Bitter Blossom really didn't do very much. They unbanned Grogary Grave Troll. Yes, it was in a good tier 2 deck. You could argue it was a tier 1.5 deck, but it wasn't. it's not Death Shadow. So your creatures are very good. They are fill up your graveyard. Actually, this is a much weaker version of what it could have been. It could have been uh, Treasure Cruise. I don't know if Treasure Cruise was ever okay. Mod I guess it was okay modern for a little bit of time. Uh, dig through time, right? Because you are messing with your graveyard and you do have graveyard because you do have cards that rely on your graveyard like Tassiker and Angler and Snapcaster Mage. So Snapcaster Mage is a very good card. It can hit your Lightning Bolt, your Terminate, your Fatal Pusses, your Stubborn Denials, which will protect your big creature, which would be Death Shadow. Overall, this deck has a lot of resilience. I, I have the deck. I did make it. Um, people will ask, why did I buy, buy it if I expected to be banned? Uh, my principle is I would rather win games now 
and have a better time, what is your time? What is your entertainment value worth to you? Yes, I make this deck, but if I play modern every once every two weeks, then I, I have a better time because I'm playing a deck that should win more and it does win more. I, at least I feel like when I lose, it's because I made a mistake, not because I was playing a subpar deck and you know, losing because you don't have the money to buy the tier one deck is just not a great feeling. And I do feel like these cards have got cheaper, but maybe it's time for banning. I own this deck. I'm okay with them, with them banning it. I know it is very oppressive. I typically do very well with it, either 4-1 or 3-2 or better. Sometimes 5-0, but it's really hard to go 5-0 in my store because there's some really good players. But uh, overall, I like the deck, I love the deck, but I do feel like they will ban it. That's just my initial gut feeling based on opponents interacting with it. They don't like the deck. My opponents do not like the deck. Uh, it reminds me a lot of Jund when Jund was the strongest deck. The cards in this deck are not cheap today. But at the same time, the deck is very dominant. So it's a, expense, it's a more expensive deck that is dominant. That creates a system where, uh, that creates something where if you cannot afford the four snaps, you cannot afford the fetch lands, even though they got cheaper today, you're not going to really like the fact that you're getting beat by expensive deck. Anyway, that's it, guys. I will talk to you later. Bye, guys.